Hello, Facebook people. <laughs> this is, I'm Rob Rivera with BEA Technical Group. Um, today, uh, Jake DiBattista will be on the chat. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and uh, put them in the chat and he can respond to them during the, the session here. And today we'll be talking about the restroom kit, the BEA restroom kit. And at the heart of that restroom kit, is uh, one of the items in the kit, the BR3X module. This BR3X module uh, has two functions for it, which we'll talk about a little bit today for the restroom kit. What are the differences? How does it function? First, I'm gonna introduce all the, the components of that. And uh, so the BR3X, we also have the, the sounder, the 10 LED sounder, which is really the occupied when lit sign it does have a sounder built into it there's a jumper on there that has to be changed so it doesn't sound or does sound just you can have, have the ability to have the occupied lit only or the occupied lit with the sounder so the other component in this is the uh, the push button the push we call it the push to lock lock when lit button um this obviously when you push it it notifies the people inside it lights up so they know that the door is locked and it, uh, it obviously locks, it activates the system. Now, the last component of this little kit here is the switch. I'm using a different switch today, but uh, this, the switch comes with the kit. This is a door switch, and this is to activate and reactivate. I'll show that in, in depth. But those are the components. You get a couple of schematics in this as well. Uh, an application notes, you get a couple of schematics on the two applications. And now let me talk a little bit about the two applications that we have. We have uh, normally locked and normally unlocked. So uh, before I get in that, I just want to touch real quick on why you would need a bathroom, a rep, sorry, a restroom kit uh, for a bathroom is what I'm trying to spit out. Um, if you have a single use restroom, for those of you who are technicians or estimators or project managers, and you're trying to figure out like, where would I need a restroom kit? This restroom kit would fit on single use restrooms. Obviously, if you have a multi-use restroom, you have a push-pull door with no locks, no levers, and you don't need a restroom kit, obviously. But if you have a single restroom and you're putting an automatic door on it, you're gonna need this. And you're gonna need it because when they come in, they obviously don't wanna be able to turn the lever and lock it up, right? So uh, to do that though is a little bit tricky uh, because you have your inside push button that will activate the door uh, if, oh, okay, my, sorry, my button's off. Um, a wire come loose it this will activate your door at all times with the electric strike from the inside and the outside so if you put if you put in a restroom kit you can turn off the outside switch and disable the electric strike which is the whole idea of the restroom kit that being said let's get in the mix of it so if you have and i have here a cylindrical lever cylindrical lever sets let me get, let you get a little bit closer here. So cylindrical lever sets, like the one on this door, will only lock at one single point. Now, even if you had a deadlock on him, so that you could lock the door, the arm and the motor and the, the operator would be taxing every time you hit the outside push button, you'd be trying to open the door. Not good for your arm, spindle, operator motor so that's where this would come in to properly set it up also you have your mortise bodies the mortise body if some of you may know and some of you may not slide into the body here and see the entire door system the the door itself larger keys they oftentimes have the uh, deadbolt built into them this one does not but you can get them with obviously uh, that can also lock your door, but again, your operator is going to be taxing. 
So that's the whole reason behind this. Now, when we get into the two applications for this, we have the push to lock, I'm sorry, uh, the normally locked, normally locked would be the Starbucks, the gas stations, the staff bathrooms at, at uh, restrooms at uh, hospitals. And if they wanted to secure the door, if you go up to say Starbucks, and you are you go up to the counter and say, I need to use your restroom. They push the button, they unlock the door, you go in, you think you're safe. If somebody comes up to the counter and says, hey, I need to use the restroom, and they push the button again and unlock the door while you're using the restroom, not a good thing. So this is where a restroom kit can really do you some good on the normally locked situation. When you go into the restroom, you actually push to push the lock, lock and lit. And even if that counter person hits the button, it's not going to unlock the door for you. That's the security part of it. The, the normally unlocked would be kind of the run of the mill standard everyday application where you would you'd have a fail safe. Now here's the key. You have a fail secure electric strike on the normally locked. On the normally unlocked, you'll have a fail safe electric strike that just lets you open it, even though I'm locked on the inside. This because of this residential style knob, that's, uh, that's what we have here. But if you went to a storeroom function, if you do a normally unlock, you're gonna need to go to the storeroom function, which has a key on the front, it's always locked. This doesn't engage on the outside. You put your lever on the inside uh, and you have free egress from the inside at all times. That's the way, so when they, they walk up on a normally unlocked, they'll simply pull the handle, walk into the bathroom. As soon as they walk in the bathroom, there's no locks to, to be seen. They need to push the lock, lock and lit, which we'll get into. So those are your two applications. So now let's get to the wiring of this. I'm gonna show you exactly how, what is entailed and how to wire up one of these systems. So I have, for, for time's sake, I've. Uh, isolated this to our exterior side devices. The uh, occupied when lit sign will be obviously on the exterior of the door as as well as, and I've done this on purpose. I have one button that's gonna be hardwired. Uh, the inside button's gonna be hardwired. The exterior is gonna be radio controlled. A lot of people ask, can this be radio controlled? Yes, it can, and we're gonna do it today. So I'm gonna show you how to differentiate in case you had to use one or both. So, uh, one other device that does not come in the kit that I've included uh, on this uh, is a power supply. I would advise looking at a power supply, a separate power supply for all of these devices because you have a lot of devices and your operator may or may not provide enough amperage and that can be a, kind of a problem. So this is this mean well we sell and it is an excellent little power supply. It has a DIN rail built into the back of it. I have it affixed with Velcro, which we do often, fits into almost any header on the market. So great little power supply. So let's get into the actual wiring here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out where each device terminates. So I have my auto door here and my auto door is gonna be an output, right? Let's see my door trying to open. And this is my inside push button. So my inside push button is going to go to IN2 and ground. Now, the difference between IN1 and IN2 is, is critical in this. The IN2 does not turn off at any time. So it will open the door all the time. If you're inside your bathroom, obviously you want, you can push your push button, your push plate at any time, activate your door and get out. And we'll get further into that, what that means, because with this module, it will mean a little bit more than just simply that. Oops. Okay, wrong terminal, bad eyes. Okay, there we go. So now, actually, where's the right terminal? My apologies. 
this uh, BR3 I've used a bit, so I have to open one of the terminals up. My apologies. There you go. I'll straighten my wire out. Okay, upwards and onwards. I think I'm gonna have to strip a little bit out of my old wire here. There you go. Okay, there we are. So, uh, this would be something a technician in the field would face. Okay, so on to our wireless. Let's land, terminate our wireless. So our wireless button is gonna be the outside push button, the exterior side. So let's put that into our ground, which also I have to loosen up since I accidentally tightened the wrong side. And I like the way that one went a lot better. <laughs> so obviously this is, these are both gonna be normally open. So off of the 900 we're using, the white and green are gonna be our signal. And I fear I still haven't got that one. My input to ground has caused me a little bit of heartache here. There you go. Okay, so now on to our other inputs. Our push to lock, lock when lit, uh, are normally open, the white and green from the push to lock, lock when lit will be in the IN3 and ground. Now, it appears that I made those a little bit long. If you make them long, it's just going to cause you a little bit of heartache. So it's worth it two seconds to, to cut it off. And let's go into ground. So if you take these one step at a time, one device at a time, and you check your schematic and make sure that you're wiring each device independently correct, the sum will equal the total. So you will have a functioning device at the end. The last input is going to be our door switch on IN4 and ground. And now the, the reason for the, the home switch is obviously when the door is closed, it allows you to push the lock and lock the door. But when you open it, open the door either manually or automatically, it resets the whole system when the, when the switch opens. It's a normally closed switch with the door closed. Normally closed when the door is closed. So this is a single pull, single throw switch, which is, you know, you, you can, use any switch. Some bathrooms, they want concealed switches for the beauty. Uh, now, I have this adjusted, and I want to go a little bit in that. You can use relay one as labeled, AC or DC. I'm going to put it on DC because this is a BEA strike. I have this strike also set up fail safe, so I can just open my door. And I have it on DC, which is the requirements of the strike. I also have it on wet output. So wet output meaning it's going to put out voltage amperage to my strike. Now, the common on our relay one is your output, your positive output. In this case, I powered it up with the 24 volt um, one amp mean well, and so my positive will go on my common. My negative will go to normally open in this particular instance because our strike is a fail safe. 
Now for simplicity sake, I have um, wired in a few devices. So let me grab my water. Now we're on to our relays. Sorry, drop my wire here. So our strike is in uh, normally open and common of relay one. My auto operator is gonna be my second output and R2 normally op open and common as well because of my operator. And today, because it's what I have on my door, I have a Record 8100, but obviously this can work perfectly with all brands an auto door operator just takes a signal and opens the door. So it's not, uh, not a big deal to use any brand with this. And if you need its specifics on the, the power supplies or anything like that, we have the EA technical to always assist you. So now we're landed on relay one with our strike. We're landed on relay two with our auto operator. I can put this up here and I have put in a couple wires for R3 and for my power. Now, R3 is gonna make and break my power going to my occupied when lit and my push to lock lock when lit. So I'm gonna take both the negatives from both of these devices and I am going to connect them to the negative of my power supply, which is right here. Okay. Now, I'm gonna take both of my positives from both of these devices and hook those to relay three, to the common of relay three. When you push the push to lock, it's gonna activate relay three as well. The oranges are labeled as R3, relay three. And that's what will energize both of these. Okay, so now, I also need, since, uh, let's see, nothing more on this, but I will need the other leg of R3 is now gonna go directly to power. And obviously, I need to provide power for my devices. So, I need to go the positive, directly to the positive leg of power on my VR3X and on my receiver, my 900, RD900. Okay, so now I have everything powered up properly. Okay, and now I do have the negative leg of my VR3X that I have to land to the negative leg of the power supply. And I do have the negative leg of my receiver that's gonna go to the negative leg of my power. Let me grab a wire nut here. And that is our wiring. Okay, so now the door switch again is made and the switch is closed when the door is closed. I'm gonna show you what happens. This is a very common error that is that we get on tech calls, but um, I'm gonna first power the system up Okay, we can see power on our LEDs. And now let me go through some programming on this. Okay, so now we have no programming in our BR3X uh, at this moment. So I'm gonna show you how to program that to end you normally unlocked. So we push and hold for one, two, three. You'll see FF, you're gonna hit the left button only one at a time until you get to NU. NL, NU. Now, the only setting you're gonna have when you push the right button, you'll go to H2, hold for relay two. And let's put that at two seconds to hold our door. That's relay two. The others will hold with the button. And now we're gonna also set the delay, D1. Let's set it to underscore three. That's where I commonly set uh, electric strikes. 
that's going to give us a delay between the time the operator opens and the time the, the strike will fire first and then three quarters of a second later the door will open now what you'll notice is because of our push button we don't get any activation on here and that's to be expected all one last thing also we have to tune in our 900 so for those of you who haven't done that one you'll see red push 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 oh, I did. There we go. Okay. So now you can see that button is now functioning and working, activating normally because we don't have this in locked. Now, now let, let, let my door time out. And when it closes, I'll push our push to lock, lock when lit. And you will notice that it does not function again because we don't have our door switch in place not working but as soon as we put this here and the magnet and notifies the magnet now we can push the lock now if we push the outside it's it's activating but this does not get to the relay control of the br3x so it does not but now on the inside push button and let me give you a little bit better view of this okay so here's my inside push button right here and if you push this you'll notice that it opens and resets the whole system. And now when the door closes, the outside push button will work because it was the switch was broken at this point by the auto operator. But this is all that's set up in this, in this restroom kit to do this and save yourself a lot of trouble with your arm, your spindle, your operator. Now, again, we do have a working outside push button. And just to go over it one last time now, again, these devices here would be inside your auto door header. Your BR3X, your receiver, your power supply would be inside your auto door header. I've tried to mark that clearly. These would be on the exterior of your building. This would be telling you that when the door is closed, now it's occupied when lit and that this button is not gonna work it now. And now if I open it manually, it resets and now this push button will work. So that is the restroom kit and the the systematic installation of it, the, the couple of schematics that you get with it, you follow it in that systematic way. Um, it's not a very difficult product to install and it will save you a lot of trouble. Very, very effective tool. Uh, Jake, do we have any questions? Uh, no, we do not have any questions. Okay. Well, so uh, a couple of other things that you need to know, we do sell along with this. Uh, an emergency uh, s s release switch. It's a little pull cord that is kind of like a nurse call system. And that would be for like a, a, a faculty, uh, sorry, uh, an educational institution where if there was an emergency, they could, a kid or somebody could pull the cord and unlock the door and sound alarm. It comes with a little light that goes over the door. It's also obviously for, for medical uh, systems, uh, healthcare, uh, clinics, anything, uh, hospitals, anything like that. So that kit can be integrated into this system. And if you need a notifier over the door, there's a problem, the sounder, that's why the, the, there's a sounder built into this um, for that emergency system. Otherwise than that, you have these singular components that combine to make a, a, a very simple to install. Now, one last thing on this also is if you were to install this, I would recommend, for simplicity, you drill a hole basically in your auto operator, you pull all wires, multi-conductors and everything right down here. When you put your push to lock, lock when lit, right closest to your lever, so when they come in, they look at and they normally would see a lever set that doesn't have a face on it. If I can wrap this out, here's my lever set. Oh, I have two sided. Great, I have two sided lock. Normally, it would have no cylinder in there for um, on the inside, so it would be free egress. In other words, but for simplistic sake, you would pull all your wires down to your strike point because you have an electric strike anyways, and you would have your occupy when lit right on the other side of this. You would have your electric strike here. There's no reason you couldn't put a door switch near your electric strike. So you would have all your wires for your components 
These again would be in your auto door header. All your components and lights would be at one singular point for a, for a very quick install. I've installed this system um, head to toe in about three hours. So I hope that uh, this has been helpful and uh, informative and I appreciate everybody who's come. Jake, still no questions? No, nope, no questions. Okay, good, then I'll leave it there. I appreciate everybody's time and uh, thank you for attending our little restroom kit soiree. <laughs>